Hey everybody and welcome to Marvel Champions Experience. Remember, I would always appreciate it if you consider liking this video. If you really, really like this content, please think about subscribing. It really helps out the channel. And last but not least, drop a message down in the comments whether you liked what you saw, whether you didn't like what you saw, whether you want to see me do something in specific. Ready? got a great comment from one of you guys. You want to see me do, run through actual campaigns. Have that on the list. But anywho, uh, let me know what I mess up here. New hero, new villain, I'm bound to make lots of mistakes, but that's okay, right? Single player game. Uh, yeah, so please, please, I would appreciate a like, a subscribe, and a comment. All right, here we are. Just did my unboxing yesterday of, what is this? Age Apocalypse. I have all the cards over here sleeved. They're all ready to go. Um, but today, I definitely wanted to start with Magic. Right, this is the one that I was looking forward to the most. I think she looks really fun, and I'm gonna go with Unis. And I think that's how you spell his name. I wasn't the biggest X Men fan growing up. I liked them. I liked them. Red Age of Apocalypse just never was good with pronunciations. I think his name's Unis. All right, I read this a little wrong yesterday. I didn't read it a little wrong. I I, I understood it a little incorrectly. So I'll make sure I go through it correctly right now. So the way I usually do this is we're gonna go through our setup. You know, I'll do a quick, should I pause it? No, you know what? We're just going to go through today. I'm going to do something which, which I normally don't do. I normally like to, you know, I like to show you guys wins, right? So you guys can see, you know, um, best, you know, plan of action, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I usually pause the video after the setup and then do a shuffle. I'm just running this through. Um, you're going to see this win, lose, or draw because I don't have a lot of time. And I want you guys to see how this fight looks. All right. So whether we get demolished in turn one or we win in turn 25, one take. All right. So this is where I read this wrong. All right. It's going to be a little, hopefully you can read this. It's a little hard to read, but I'll read it for you. All right. So we've got this set up, right? We have Unis. We have the Infinites. Uh, they are there. Um, and we are actually going to do standard three. Let's go that there. We're going to do standard three. They say that this is as easy or as difficult as standard one. Let's see. I don't think so, but I'd like to test it out for you guys. All right, so we'll set that up in a second. Uh, we are not playing expert just now because we're learning the fight, so we don't get this extra encounter card. We're gonna reveal, reveal the gene pool side scheme. Now we flip, okay. Force response, after resolving step one of the villain phase, place one threat on the gene pool. This is where I got a little bit um, misunderstanding with, you might've understood it, I I definitely misunderstood it. So the way I did it in my unboxing was I was like, oh, okay, I thought this was gene pool. This is actually hunting the gene traders. So I assumed that this was going to get an extra threat on it, when in actuality, this is the gene pool. This is permanent, it's a setup, it stays in the game no matter what. Right. Um, then this says after an ally is defeated by anything other than consequential damage, place three threat here. So if an ally tanks and defense for um, jump blocks for us, three threat goes here. So we don't want that. OK, um, when I read his abilities, it said if the amount of threat on gene pool is at least three, you know, he gets retaliated. If it's at least six, he gains stalwart. If it's at least nine, he also gains a boost icon. I thought that was this. It's actually this. So. That's good to know. And it starts the game with four. So that means he's no matter he's going to start the game with at least retaliate one. So right off the bat, I'm thinking I definitely want to thwart from this, uh, get some threat off of there, et cetera, et cetera. This starts with no threat, but let's get our dice ready for that. And let's see, uh, I think this is the side that starts after you place a pursuit counter here. Right, okay, so this is gonna be the new way that we get Shadows of the Past in. This is the new Shadows of the Past, essentially. So I don't know, let's put this, this is where I usually keep my deck. Uh, let's put it here? I gotta find a new spot for this, I'm running out of spots. Okay, so we are going to shuffle this for the first time. And I usually hate doing a first shuffle because it never really gets shuffled that well. So I'm gonna do what I usually do. And so I'll do like a quick little shuffle like this. Then do we'll do one of these things where I like spread them out, right? 
and mix and match just because I really like to get them good and shuffle for the first time. So this is where I need to kill a little bit of dead air during this. I used to have a video game podcast and kind of ran out of time to be able to do that. So I'm kind of used to filling dead air. Uh, I hope everybody's doing well. If you celebrate Easter, that bunny's coming around in a couple days. My daughter is very much looking forward to that. So, oh shoot, I haven't decorated any eggs yet. Yikes, that's not good. All right, so here's our shuffle for Unis, his encounter deck. All right, and I think that seems okay. So that's that. All right, we're using magic and we're gonna do the same thing. Okay, this is also the pre-con deck. This is the one that I unboxed yesterday. So I don't know what the hell I'm doing, okay? I have no idea how to play this character. Uh, my buddy, Matt, um, check him out, Matt Jenkins Comedy. He's he, He'd like to think he's funny, but he's not. No, this guy's hysterical. Um, my buddy, Matt, who plays with me, was testing out uh, Bishop before. He said he's a little weird. Um, he basically kind of said all the things that I said yesterday about Bishop, where it's like, you gonna you you need to draw a certain way with Bishop in order for him to do well. So definitely looking forward to starting with her first. And my buddy Matt doesn't like using new heroes and new villains, uh, which is totally respectable. But I got you guys want to see it, right? You, you want some content. So we're gonna we're gonna take one for the team. We're gonna make a million mistakes in this fight, and we will figure it out. All right. So I feel that's decently shuffled. We'll get that there. Okay, so here we go. I have my 10 health, he has his 12 health. Everything seems okay. Uh, the lighting seems okay. And I think we're good to go. All right, we're drawing six. And I truly haven't played this game one, two, three, four, five, six in at least two months. I know, it's crazy. It's crazy, it's crazy. Um, life, am I right? All right, I'm done talking. You don't wanna hear me. Okay. <coughs> When you change the hero form, interrupt. When you change the hero form, choose a spell in your discard pile, put it in the top of your deck. Okay, I don't know what her spells are. I don't know. So let's see what's going on. All right, so we got the Steffer Cuckoos. Um, when a player reveals treachery, exhaust this. Uh, cancel the effects of that and discard it. Uh, pretty good. We got Clobber, I know what that does. Here's a superpower, here's a spell. So we got two clobbers. After you defeat an enemy with a basic attack, exhaust this, take a damage. Yeah, I'm not too big on that. So I don't know if we should mulligan, because I don't know what's in here, right? So let's see. Deal three damage to an enemy, but he's got retaliate. So we don't actually really want to damage right away. What is this? Ready your hero, choose a magic card in your discard pile, not name stepping disc, and put it on the top of your deck. All right, and what does her thing do again? It's play with the top card of your deck face up. Once per phase, you may play that card as if it were in your hand, reducing its cost by one. So we can put a spell from our discard pile on the top of our deck. So it could be magic barrier. When an enemy initiates an attack, prevent three damage from this attack. Okay, so we could put that in the top of our deck if we wanted, but it's uh, it wouldn't really be helpful right now. So I, what I think we're gonna do is I think we're gonna mulligan. Um, I don't want that. I don't want to attack right now. I mean, what's her? She's got one thwart, right? So I could bring this down to three, but I'd still get the retaliate. I'm not really feeling like getting some retaliate damage this early in the game. Uh, I definitely will discard that. Do I just discard both clobbers? What the hell? All right, we're, we're mulligating these four. We're drawing a new four. One, two, three and four. Okay. So we don't have anything that's going to help us with that. Uh, and none of these are a spell, correct? Nope. Okay. All right. So when you change, uh, choose a spell in your discard pile. So I guess I could have put a, this this spell there, but it's fine. Um, 
All right. I guess we just flip now, all right? Something else to do. Okay, play with the top card of your deck face up. All right, so you have the power of aggression here, which is actually beneficial because of this soul strike, okay? Because we can stun him as well. All right. Um, let's see. What are we going to do? I have no freaking clue. Uh, play lane for identity has an X-Men trait. When the villain would scheme, discard this, cancel that activation, deal one face down and counter card. I'm never using that. Hate it. Hate it with a passion. I will never deal myself a face down and counter card. Um, but, I mean, she... Yeah, I don't want that. Gold balls. What do you do? When gold balls attack, discard up to three cards from the top of your deck. <sighs> Plus three attack for that. Uh, not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Ready your hero, choose a magic card in your discard pile, not named stack deck, and put it in the top of your deck. So, interesting. I could use this soul strike, right? Play this. No, play this. Um, and put it back on the top of my deck and then play it again? Am I, think, am I doing that correctly? Um, he'd already be stunned. So maybe I'd be wasting a stun. I don't know. Talking a lot. It's only 11 minutes into this game. So uh, I think we just need to start rolling with stuff. Uh, do I want to play gold balls? No, nah, let's play around with her magic. Uh, magic. All right. Let's spend Tempest to put out this test the defense. Oh, no, 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 no. Because this soul strike is too cost. Um, but what does this do? Um, you may play the top card of your deck if it's always in your hand. Can I play this? Deal four more Interesting. I don't understand how this works. Like, can I play this now? Like, this is a power... Can I play this? Is this in play? Play the top card of your deck as if it were in your hand. I mean, I guess I could play it, right? It's it's in my hand, so I can play it, which means I can use it as a resource. And I guess that makes sense here, right? If the top card of your deck has a physical or... Yeah, so I, I'm going to go with that I can do that. If I can't, let me know. Play the top card of your deck as if it were in your hand. So I'm assuming this is in my hand. I don't lose the resource cost because it doesn't have a resource cost, but if it's in my hand, I can use it. So um, that being said, I think I will, this is an event. I think I will then use the Tempest to play this because um, then I get to play that for free. I can use the stepping disc. Uh, oh no, maybe not. Let's see. What does this do? After you play an attack event, this is not an attack event. It's not an attack event. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how to do eight damage to him right now. Uh, let's see. Because I would draw it. Let's see. If I used these two, no, I pay for that with that, right? Um, then stepping disc, put it at the top of your deck. Then if I use this to pay for stepping disc, and then I can use these two again to play the soul strike again. I think that works. Okay. So, um, and this readies her, is that correct? Yeah. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to thwart for one, bringing this to three, right? Oh, he's got a tough. So actually I've changed my mind. I'll just leave that retaliate there. The first thing that I'm going to do is take the tough off and I take a damage. Okay. That kind of sucks. It's fine. Uh, all right. The second thing I'm going to do is use this power of aggression and pay for this soul strike. So I deal four damage to him and the top card of my deck had that resource, right? 
Is that how that works? It might be how it works. Um, so he takes four damage. One, two, three, four, and he's stunned. Okay. Now I use this. I'll use Tempest to pay for Stepping Disc. Ready your hero. Choose a magic card in your discard pile, not named Stepping Disc. Put it on the top of your deck. Okay. So now I can... Oh, you know what? Um, no, I can't do that. I was going to say, should I, try to, should I try to get this out? I'd have to use Magic Barrier. Um, no, I want, I want to kind of hold on to this and see how this, how this works. Um, all right. This costs one less, or do I want to play around with this thing? Nah, do I? Yeah, you know what? Let's play around with this thing. Okay, so I just did the math, right? Um, Let's say I used let's say I used gold balls at the beginning of the turn to pay for this magic barrier. Sorry, uh, let's say I used gold balls at the beginning of the turn to pay for this test of defense. I already used the soul strike once. That was an attack event, so this will get one counter on it. Okay, she's readied. Um, oh, sorry, I took another damage because this was an attack as well. And now I will thwart for one here. Bring that to three. This cost one less because it's at the top of my deck. I'll use the magic barrier to pay for this. Deal another four damage. One, two, three, four. Um, and I take another damage. All right. And that goes to two. And that's my turn. I think I did that right. All right, so now we're drawing five. One, two, three, four, five. We play with the top card face up. Another power of aggression. We have nothing here to help us on defense. But um, he shouldn't be attacking us anyway. Okay. So this goes to one. This is going to go to four. You don't attack because you're stunned. And here comes our first encounter card. Uh, this is an obligation. Discard a card from your hand, discard this card. Okay, so not bad. Dystopian Nightmare. Don't love it, but I'm not gonna cry about it. Okay, so discard a card from this hand. Uh, discard a card from your, yeah, this has gotta go, so. Oh, it's an alter ego action, though. Got it. Okay, so I'm going to flip because I play conservative. I don't want to deal with an extra encounter card. So we will be flipping this turn. And we'll figure that out later. Okay, so I'm going to be discarding this blood gem. That's that's what I'm going to definitely do. Um, I have these two attack events. Oh no, these are not attack events. So this won't go up. Um, let's see. I can get a spell back. Oh, I can get that soul strike back? Oh, I think she just got way better. Okay, so what could I do? All right, um, I'm going to play this as if it were from a hand, right? To get triage out. She is going to heal me for two. Okay. Um, this is gonna be played face up, right? Once per phase. Oh, I see. Okay, I've already messed up on this, but it's okay, I'm just gonna keep playing it through. Um, it says once per phase, you can play the top card of your deck as if we were in your hand. So in that previous turn, I actually couldn't have done um, that, that, that attack, that soul strike attack. So I'm noting that. I'm learning. We're going to keep it through, though. We're going to keep playing it through. So I just realized that. All right. 
um, so this gets going to play face up. But now I can't use this. So, okay, that's good to know. All right. I still can use this basic spell, though, if I wanted. Um, heal three damage, remove three threat from a scheme, deal three damage. To what happens when you flip? Should we just flip him? I could flip him right now. Uh, I definitely want to get rid of this, though. So, let's see. How do I flip him? He's got four health. I'm trying to think. Whoops, I dropped something. All right. Um, so I know I have a clobber coming in next. Um, I don't want to play this card. I don't like this card. Yeah, I don't want to do that, right? I do that. Get a free resource. See, I'm already, I'm tempted by the by the blood gem. I'm tempted by this damn card. It's not bad. No, I will not be tempted by the fates. All right. What am I going to do? I could. Hmm. I could remove three threat from there, which would, you know, take away the retaliate. That might be the best move, unfortunately. So I might not be able to flip him this turn. Let's do that. Let's uh, let's play these two cards and play this basic spell. I have the mystic trait, okay? I'm gonna choose to remove three threat from a scheme. We'll do it from this one. So I'm gonna remove the retaliate. Retaliate's gone. Uh, so this is gone too, right, okay. Now, uh, you will attack for two. Sound of two health. Um, and then you can, let's play the, you're going to scheme, so might as well remove one threat from the main scheme. And now we're going to flip. Uh, we're going to discard a card from your hand and discard this card. Okay. Interrupt when you change to hero form. Okay, so we haven't changed to hero form yet, so we can't do that. All right, we're readying up. Uh, and our turn is done. So we are drawing six cards. That's one, two, three, four, five, and six. We can't play with the top card face up yet because that's for this other side. I don't think that anything happens in alter ego form, remove four threat from a scheme. Clapper. Okay, cool. All right, so your turn. This is gonna get one. This is gonna go up to two. You're gonna scheme for one. Uh, you are stunned. So he's just scheming for one. Here comes our encounter card. Uh, place one pursuit counter on so we've already got one of these. So this is going to get a pursuit counter. And then if it has any counters on it, this card gains surge. So it does now have a counter on it. Um, when revealed, Unus activates against you. If the amount of the threat in the gene pool is at least three. Okay. So nothing of that happens. He's only at two. So he's activating against us. He's scheming for one. Uh, after this activation... Okay, so he's scheming for one plus nothing. So this goes up to three. Um, place one. No, this is the boost. After this resolve, after this activation resolves, pers one pursuit counter here. So one more. Oh, no, no, this needs four. If there are at least three more than the number of players, there's one player, so it needs to be four to flip. So that was an interesting turn. It sucks that we're stunned, though. Okay. It is now our turn. So there's a couple things that we could do. What, what, what's going on here? I get retaliate when the top card of your deck. Buh, 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 buh. I get plus defense, draw two cards, choose and discard one. Okay. So it sucks that she 
is stunned. I don't know what this is. Um, I can choose a spell and put it on the top of my deck. I could choose this spell. This would be interesting if I chose this, but this one is gonna stun him. It's gotta be this one. It's gotta be that. It has to be that, right? Like there's really no other choice. No other choice. I can stun him. Like why the hell would I not wanna stun him? All right, um, it's, it's a four damage attack though. So I think I'm gonna have to play this basic spell first to flip him to get the most out of this turn. Okay, so um, I flipped and did that ability. Okay, so I am stunned. So in order to play this, I'm gonna to need to exhaust. So I'm attacking to remove this stun. Okay, um, you can do one thing. Actually, I don't, yeah, I, you, I can't chum block with you, so you're gonna have to do something now. All right, so I might play this as well. I'm definitely interested in that. I'm definitely interested in the basic spell. Move four threat from a scheme. It's not bad. I'm not in dire need of it. Clobber is also an interesting card I could play. If Clobber is the first card that I play, I can return this to my hand. This is also an attack event, which would bring this up. Um, do I get rid of this armor? Do I get rid of this draw two cards? Oh, this is tough. Okay, if I'm gonna stun him, I don't need this magic barrier again. I need two to play this clobber though. Uh, but then I would get the clobber back, and then I can use one of the... I can get the clobber back, then I can use the clobber to pay for the soul strike, right? Um, because it would only cost one. Then I'd be holding these. I could still use the basic spell. I can use spiritual meditation as well. Okay, so... I think... It hurts to give up this. Oh, I can confuse him. Ooh, that one's really good. Uh, okay, I'm going to give up. This basic spell is pretty good too. This armor is pretty good. Damn, I have a bunch of good cards, guys. Three, three damage isn't bad. All right, I'm going to give up the basic spell. Okay. So I'm going to use these two to pay to play Clobber, okay? This is the, um, I deal three damage to him, which flips him. All right, so let's flip him first. I deal three damage to him. He's flipped. He has 15 health now. He comes in with a tough. Okay. Um, this now goes back to my hand. It's the first card that I played. Um, and that was an attack event, correct? Yes, so this goes to three. Now, I'm going to attack with triage to remove this tough. I will now use this ability, right? Um, deal four damage to an enemy, the top card of your deck. So I guess I, oh shoot, this, I can't stun him. That sucks. Uh, once per phase, you may play the top card over your deck as if it were in your hand. Yeah, but I don't think... Th yeah, so this uh, this won't work like that. That's fine. He's not going to get stunned. Which sucks. So maybe I don't want to do what I just did. Um, oh, I know what I want to do. I know what I want to do. Okay. We're going to play Spiritual Meditation. We're going to draw two cards. And we're going to choose one to keep in my hand, and that's going to be Soul Strike. Now we play with this face up. Damn it, I was hoping for someone to be able to play that with. Um, so I kind of screwed myself there. I kind of screwed myself there. But it's okay. 
I think I'm going to hold on to the Soul Strike because I kind of want to try to stun him at some point. So, uh, I mean, I could play it now, I guess. I could also confuse him on the next turn. You know what? Let's do this. Let's use this clobber to pay for this magical armor. I really like these two cards. I want to play around with them, so I don't want to discard them yet. So my turn is over. So, I mean, you know what? I might as well use this. I can play the top card of my deck as if it were in my hand, reducing its card by one. I might as well just put this into play, because I can. So, because it's now zero. So, why not? All right, we're going to ready up, and we're drawing three cards. One, two, three, and this gets played face up. Another one of those. Um, there we go. That'll help. Okay, your turn. This is going to go to four. This is going to go to three. So now he gets this. You're going to attack for two, and I'll defend, because I have this, and I'll get retaliate, so I might as well, right? I'll defend. Um, while the top card of your deck has an energy resource, I get plus one defense, so I have a three. So you're hitting me for two. Uh, that's four, so I only take one damage. Uh, you take a damage, though, because of retaliate. I think we're good. Here comes our encounter card. Each nemesis minion in play activates against you. If no minions are activated, so I place three pursuit counters on this. So it looks like this is going to five, and now we're going to get our minion. After you flip to this side, find your nemesis minion and reveal it. Um, got it. Okay. So this gets flipped over. So we need our nemesis. Where is she? All right, it's, uh, who is it? This one, and the side scheme. We were doing so well, too. All right. Okay. That was what, the encounter? Yeah, that was the encounter. So this one doesn't activate against us right now. Six health. Three threat. Okay. Um, when revealed, the Ilyana receiver finds Limbo and attaches it face down here. When this scheme is defeated, put Limbo into play under its owner's control. What, Limbo? Like my card? Oh, interesting. Okay. All right. Limbo. Okay. Limbo, face down, um, when this scheme is defeated, okay. So this was the one that was face up. Let me shuffle these real quick. All right, so let's see what's gonna happen now. All right, we're definitely gonna play the spiritual meditation. Ooh, hello. I don't have overkill though. Would have been nice to uh let's play the spirit of show meditation first. So draw two cards. Obviously, take this one, play with this one face up. We got Colossus. When an enemy attacks you, play Colossus from your hand. Okay. That could be helpful. Let's see. Draw a card. I don't really care about that though. Ready your hero. Choose a magic card in your discard pile. Put it on the top of your deck. Okay. Oh, hold up. Oh, we can stun the villain now. Uh, but I really need to take you out. I need to take you out. So. I think. This kind of sucks. Let's see. Uh, Colossus. 
Deal eight damage to an enemy. I could take you out right away. I don't see any other way I could take you out. Um, could do that, four damage there. I don't have another Again, steady. Hmm. I could play Colossus for two cards. He'd only do two damage, though. After discard the top three cards of your deck. I gotta get. I gotta get this card out of here. Um. I really gotta get that card out of there. What does Limbo do again? Now you know what. That's really not that important right now. I think I really got, I think I got to get rid of these cards and I think I got to get rid of them unless I flip and um, nah, let's get rid of this. I hate everything about this. I really do, but I'm going to do it. All right. Um, I don't have overkill. Oh, I can't do it. So I could stun. Actually, I could stun her. That's what I could do. I could stun her. That might help. Okay. So if I stunned her, like I give up these two... That's got that on it, so that would stun. Right? Then I actually could ready myself and finish her off. Yeah, I don't hate that. Okay, cool. All right, so let's do that. All right, so we are going to use these two to pay for the soul strike. Actually, I don't have to finish her off yet because... Um, because something should be stunned, right? Okay, so, oh, I know what I could do, though. I'm seeing things. All right, so four damage to you. You're down to two, uh, and you're stunned. All right. Now, I'm going to, oh, damn it, I can't. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. All right, this goes to four, though. That's going to be important. Uh, I was going to try to get Colossus out. I was going to try to get Colossus out. Damn, I can't play this either. That sucks. Uh, let's see. I guess I could ready and I could get Colossus out right now. I mean, I might as well, right? It doesn't hurt. All right, I'm gonna use these two to get Colossus out. And Colossus has three health. It's got a toughness. Unfortunately, I'm not going to do anything with Colossus right now because I want to. I want to keep this chump for him on this next one, and I think that's probably the best move. I could flip to Alter Ego, but then you'd activate, and that would suck. All right. I think I feel okay with this. All right, we're gonna ready up. We're drawing five. One, two, three, four, five. I'm playing with this. Wait, God, what am I doing wrong? There we go. Now this is interesting. Now this becomes interesting because it's actually a three cost card. All right, we have our soul stored, another exorcism, spiritual meditation, soul strike, okay. Kind of just got to survive this turn. I think we're okay. All right, it's going to go to five. 
This is going to go to four. You're attacking for two. You're chump blocking. Um, so you're hitting for two. That's four. Um, but you have the tough. You don't do anything. Here comes our encounter card. Attached to an infinite minion. Uh, nope. So this gains surge. Surge, same exact card. All right. So when revealed, if the ruler of limbo in play, place two threat on it. Okay. So this is going to go to five. Oh, actually, you would have attacked for one more because of this, but it doesn't matter because you had tough anyway. All right, so we have another minion with five health. All right, but I actually think none of oh, you have guard. You can go to hell, dude. You can go to hell. All right. That sucks. All right, so we'll be okay. We're actually going to be all right, I think. Physical? Okay, I could do that. Yeah, I see some stuff that I like. Just don't know how I'm going to get it done. All right. I would love to play this card. Three costs though. One, two, three. And then I wouldn't be able to really do anything else unless I did like one, two, three. That could get him out. Oh, you lost your stun. I think we got to clear our board. So, um,. What should we do? I can't confuse him right now. Uh, I think I know what I'm going to do. Okay. We're going to get you off the board first. What is Limbo? Let me see them. Four for a scheme. Okay. Uh, what does Limbo do? That doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'm going to attack you for two. You're gone. Okay. I'm going to exhaust this. I defeated an enemy with a basic attack. I'm going to take a damage. I'm going to draw a card. This is going to be played face up. Thank God. Thank freaking God. Okay. All right. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So I said thank God because now I can play this exorcism. I can remove four threat from something. This is a mental, which means I can confuse him. Okay. Um, I could also play this stepping disc to ready myself. I'm definitely going to get an extra encounter card right now. Wait, what did I just use? Exorcism. Oh, interesting. Oh, I can, if I play... Oh, hello, 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 hello. All right. There's a lot going on right now. Okay, if I play an extra attack event, I can get him off the board. I can get him off the board. So I think the first thing I want to do is make sure I confuse him. Okay? So let's... Hmm. If I use these two, that would remove four threat from, I don't know. Let's just say here, and then he can, and then he can lose the retaliate, right? Yeah, that's at five. Okay, so I remove four threat from there with that, right? Then he's confused. Then I'm holding these. I can then play scrying. I can and there's look at the top three cards of your deck. Draw one. Discard one. Okay. I could do that. 
or I can just place, yeah, I could do something like that. I basically like, get a card in my hand and then I could play Spiritual Meditation. Stepping disc, okay. I think we're in okay shape. So let's figure this out. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use these two. I'm gonna give up this Soul Stored um, and I'm gonna play these two to play Exorcism. This has this mental resource. I'm gonna move four threat from here. You're confused. Okay, done. Now I will use this, do I wanna use this card? Or do I wanna use Spiritual Meditation? Actually, I'm gonna use Spiritual Meditation, I think. Because then, then this can come in my hand. Yeah, I don't want that. That's fine. Okay, I get an extra encounter card. This is going to get shuffled up. All right. This is getting shuffled. Okay. Now... I can play Scrying. I can look at the top three cards of my deck. Well, actually, this has to be face up first. Um, that's fine. I can look at the top, I'm gonna play this card. I'm gonna look at the top three cards of my deck. One, two, and three. Um, I'm going to draw one, discard one, and put one back on the top of my deck. Okay, so I'm going to draw one. And this is the one I think I'm gonna discard. I should probably just play this. I'm gonna put this one on top of my deck. All right, I did that. Okay, now I'm going to use the power of regression to pay to use the soul strike. Okay, this is a physical resource, so it's f four damage. Oh, you have guard though. Oh, that sucks. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. So we're just gonna uh, switch this up a little bit. Um, what I'm gonna do is I will use the Power of Aggression and Soul Strike to pay for full body charge, okay? Because it's three costs now, because it's top of my deck. I'm gonna deal eight damage to you. You're gone. This is an encounter card. But that also put this to five because that was an attack event. I can discard this and deal five damage to Unis. One, two, three, four, five. Um, I will now flip. And that was a lot, and I'm sorry that turn took so long. I apologize for that. But I'm done. I'm gonna ready up. I'm drawing six, so one, two, three, four, five, and six. Not a great hand, but that's okay. All right, this is gonna go to six. Now we're in worrisome territory. This is gonna go to one. You don't do anything because you're confused. And we have two encounter cards to deal with. Here's the first one. Um, okay, so she comes in. No quick strike because I'm on this side. All right. Then we have this. Uh, the player who defeats this scheme confuses our identity. Three. So we have a bunch of side schemes out but I'm actually not concerned with them. I'm just gonna let them play out. 
All right, and we're actually in great shape, question mark? We, we are, we're in great shape, I'm not even gonna lie. Okay, we're gonna change the hero form, put a spell from your discard at the top of my deck. I already know what I'm gonna do. Uh, Soul Strike is going to the top of my deck. Oh, this could go there too. No, Soul Strike. Let's stop playing. Let's, stop, let's not play any games, Rick. All right. So we got Soul Strike in, right? It's a one cost card. Uh, I could use Clobber right now, actually. Interesting. Yeah, let's get crazy. All right. If I use Clobber. Oh, this should be fun. All right, I'm going to use the Power of Regression to pay for Clobber, right? I deal three damage to him. One, two, three. Um, this comes back in my hand. I'm going to use this. This only costs one right now, so one cost to pay for this. This is a four damage attack. One, two, three, four. This is the top card. Right, oh, we got a stepping disc, so I can't use that right now, though. But, you know, um, ready your hero. I just want to show you guys something. Um, so, if I'm going back 50 min 40 minutes ago, I made that mistake where I couldn't play that. So, technically, I sh he should have four extra damage. So, like, one, two, three, four. I should still be able to beat him right now with that anyway. So, like, Colossus will do two, right? Magic will do two. And then, I don't know, let's get cute. Let's get cute. Um, I'll play Triage for Stepping Disc, already my hero. I will choose a card in my discard pile, not called Stepping Disc, put it up here. Use these two to pay for Soul Strike. And that's four damage. Nice. One take, guys. Very nice. Oh, I love you. She's really good. She's really, really good. So let's unpack what just happened a little bit. Um, I really didn't take any damage for the most part, right? I'm at seven health. So... I lost a little bit of damage. The, her pre-con came with things that healed me up, which I really liked. I played with this new standard three, which actually drew me Shadows of the Past for the very first time in quite a while. Actually, that's not true. Um, I don't necessarily show the ones that I lose. Um, but I drew Shadow of the Past. Not only did I draw Shadow of the Past, but I defeated my nemesis. I like played with this out. I dealed with his retaliate and everything like that. I had this minion out. I, I had a lot going on. And she handled it extremely well. Extremely well. She reminds... She's sort of like... Again, I said this yesterday in my video. She reminds me of Domino, right? Like, you can play with this top card. You know what it is. Like, so it's also sort of like Doctor Strange. And since this is your deck... I want to get Cosmo in here. I want Cosmo in her deck because they um, eroded Cosmo and Cosmo can easily sneak right back in here. So fantastic. She's really, really good. Really, really good. Has a very good pre-con. Uh, I like her a lot. I really do. So I'm tempted now to try this fight again with Bishop since I know the fight a little bit. Or just move on to the next one with Bishop. I haven't decided yet. Maybe I'll put it for a poll to you guys decide. But uh, there you go, guys. First one in the books. Uh, did not need a redo for this one. Got him my first shot. Unis down. Magic one. I truly hope you enjoyed that. Take care, everybody.